Okay, now before we decide to um, configure this network and configure this router and this switch, I decided to complicate things slightly. So as before we had VLAN 10, 20, and 30 that we needed to configure, we're also going to need to do a couple other things. So for one, I want to create a VLAN 55 to use for our native VLAN. Now on the CCNA, you're required to know how to configure the native VLAN basically on the switch and also if there's a trunk to a router, how to do that as well. So um, the native VLAN is used for backwards compatibility with devices that cannot carry VLAN tags or the VLAN ID across a trunk, right? So there's certain uh, other, let's say, other types of devices that you could connect to the switch that cannot tag with the 802.1Q protocol, and so VLANs are not supported. So if that traffic tries to go across the switch, it'll be put on the native VLAN, and then when it goes across the switch, it won't be given a VLAN tag. It won't be given a VLAN ID. So this is backwards compatibility with devices that, or not necessarily backwards, but devices that cannot support VLAN 802.1Q tagging. So we need a native VLAN, VLAN 55, right? So we're going to configure that also. And then also I want to do a management VLAN. So we'll do VLAN 77 and we'll make that used for management. And that's going to um, necessitate a couple of things. Now for management VLAN, what you're going to do is you're going to be using that, let's say, if you're the administrator and you want to telnet or secure shell into your switch to manage your switch remotely, right? So I've taken this laptop and eventually what I'll do is it'll get rid of this link and we'll do wireless. But right now it's just got a cable hooked up Ethernet port to port 5 here on the switch. And for this to work, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to give the switch, right, interface VLAN 77 for the, um, for the management VLAN. So we're going to have to configure that on the switch. We're also going to need to give the switch an IP address. We'll give the switch an IP address of 77.2. The switch has to have an IP address if you're going to be able to telnet into it, right? So we'll give the switch the IP address 77.2 on interface VLAN 77. Then we're also going to need to set up a gateway on the switch to reach the router at 77.1. So these configurations right here will be for the switch. And we're going to need to give an IP address, of course, to our device here. And we'll say 192.168.77.100. All right. And not only that, but now I've added two more sub interfaces that we're going to need on the router. We're going to need sub interface 55 and sub interface 77 for the router to be 192.168.55.1 and 192.168.77.1, right? And so then the switch will be 77.2. And then this management machine right here, this laptop, will be 77.100. And of course, the switch at this point will need a gateway of 77.1. Okay, so these configurations need to go on the switch also, and let's get started. Okay, so I clicked on the laptop, and I'm configuring the IP address for the laptop, 77.100, the subnet mask, and then the gateway, 77.1, so we can close that, and then close that. So now the laptop is fully configured. Okay, so let's do this thing in steps. So I've got up here steps, switch. We'll start with the switch, and first thing we'll do is configure the VLANs, and plus we'll put names too, right? And then we'll set the IP address on interface VLAN 77 for the switch at 77.2, all right? So to do that, we'll open up the switch. We'll go to the command line interface here, type enable, conf t to get to global config mode, and we need to set up our VLANs, right? So um, we've got VLAN 10, 20, and 30. Right? So we'll say VLAN 10, and then we'll give it a name, and we'll say VLAN 10 is for students. Okay? And then we'll say VLAN 20, and we'll say that's for we'll say that's for faculty. Okay? Oh, and wait, we'll have to VLAN 20 first, hit enter, then name faculty. Then VLAN 30, 
and we'll call that name administration. Okay. Then we'll say VLAN 55. And this is going to be name, and we'll call it native. All right. And then VLAN 77, enter, and then name, and we'll say MG, MGT for management. All right. So now we have all of our VLANs configured on our switch. We can do a show VLAN, and you can see that we have 10, 20, 30, 55, and 77, right? Okay, and those are the VLANs that we need on the switch. All right. So now, next thing I said we're going to do is we're going to do the IP address. So we'll do conf t, and we'll say interface VLAN 77. All right. And then we'll say enter. And now we'll say a IP address 192.168 dot seventy seven dot two all right and as you can see I put a space and a question mark we also need a subnet mask so we'll do space two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero and hit enter and so now we have an IP address on that VLAN we'll do control C show run and we can see down here at the bottom interface VLAN 77 and we have an IP address on it okay so now right we've got the VLANs the names and we have the IP address on interface VLAN 77 let's set up right now also the default gateway alright so the default gateway alright we'll go back into the switch We'll go to conf t to global config mode, and we'll type in IP and then a space and then a question mark, and then you can see there it is, default gateway, right? So we'll say default dash tab gateway question mark, and then it wants the IP address 192.168.77.2. Which will be the router eventually when once we configure it. Let's see if it needs a subnet mask. It does not. It just says CR carriage return. So we'll just hit enter. And now we've got a default gateway configured on the switch. Let's see if it shows in the running config. All right, I don't see it, don't see it, don't see it. IP default gateway, and there it is in the running config. Okay, what to do next? Now that we have steps 1, 2, and 3 done, I've listed steps 4, 5, and 6. We're going to need to configure the trunk right here. Then we're going to need to configure the trunk native VLAN. Now I put that down there because that's a separate configuration, kind of. I mean, you have to make sure that you set up the native VLAN on the trunk. And then we're also going to need to um, configure the switch ports and the VLANs for the switch ports. And so you'll see what I mean right now. So we'll do this right now and you can see the interfaces are pretty easy the way they're laid out so 01 is for the trunk 02, 03, 04 and 05 okay so it kinda just goes like that counterclockwise so we'll say conf t and we'll say interface fa0 slash 1 tab completion switch port mode trunk all right so now it's a trunk and then we'll say uh, up arrow and I'll say swin which switch port trunk allowed VLAN and we'll say VLANs um, we'll just say all VLAN so 1 through 1005 okay so now all those VLANs are across and then we'll say switch port I did a up arrow and now I'm in a backspace switch port trunk okay put a question mark there it is native native space question mark VLAN right 
and then question mark, and then the number, 77. So there's the command, switch port trunk native VLAN 77. Okay, so now we have the native VLAN configured on that trunk port. All right, all we have to do now is configure the rest of the interfaces that we need. I'm just hitting enter, enter, enter. So now we'll say interface FA0 slash 2 switch port mode access and then we'll say up arrow switch port access VLAN 10 because sw the port 2 port 2 is needs to be an access port and it needs to be on VLAN 10 so that this host on the 10 network is going to be on VLAN 10 right okay so there we go, we'll hit enter, done deal. 